On the second page, we have an example where we're asked to find the local extrema for this function, f of x equals x e to the 1 minus x. And so the way we find local extrema is by setting the first derivative to 0. So we need, need to differentiate x e to the 1 minus x. And that is a product. x is one function, e to the 1 minus x is another. So the way the product rule goes, remember, is you start with, uh, I'm going to differentiate the x first. So we would write a 1. And of course, that gets multiplied by the second function. So that's the e to the 1 minus x. That's kind of the first part of the product rule. And then you go plus x, that's the first function, times the derivative of the second function. Well, the derivative of the second function, since it's an exponential function, would be e to the 1 minus x. And then we would multiply that by the derivative of the exponent, the 1 minus x exponent. The derivative of negative x, of course, is negative 1. And so multiplying the negative 1 in here, that's why that plus turns out to be a minus. And then we have the x e to the 1 minus x on the end. So that's where that first derivative comes from. And we're going to set that equal to 0 to find where any local extrema or any local minimums or maximums could occur. But in order to set it equal to 0, it would be good if it's in a factored form. So let's do that before we set it equal to 0. Notice there's a common e to the 1 minus x factor in both parts here. So we can factor an e to the 1 minus x out. If we factor it out of e to the 1 minus x, we'll get 1 minus. And of course, if the e to the 1 minus x is factored out of the last part here, all that's left is the x. So 1 minus x. So we'll set that equal to 0. Now there's two factors here, uh, e to the 1 minus x. When we try to set that equal to 0, there are no solutions. That's why I have the not equal to 0 here, because you can't have any real number raised to any exponent and get 0. For example, let's say it wasn't e. Let's say you had 2, and we'll make it simple right to the power of x. That can't equal 0, because there's no power of 2 that you can ever get to equal 0. There's no number of 2's or parts of number of 2's that you can ever get to equal 0. Uh, x can't even be a, a rational number like, you know, 2 to the power of a quarter. That doesn't equal 0. Okay, the fourth root of 2 is still a decimal higher than 0. So you can never get a power of any real number base to ever equal 0. It's just not possible to do that. So the e to the 1 minus x cannot equal 0, but the uh, 1 minus x can. So if we set uh, 1 minus x to 0, uh, 1 is the number that makes that equal to 0. So where x is 1, there could be a local minimum or local maximum. And so let's find the uh, function value for that. Let's put 1 in the original function. So we would go 1 times e to the 1 minus 1. And of course, uh, 1 minus 1 is 0. So e raised to the power of 0 is 1. So this is actually just 1 times that 1. So it's 1. So this is the point 1, 1 we're talking about. It's either a local minimum or a local maximum. We'll use the second derivative test to determine that. So second derivative, we're going to take the derivative of the first derivative. The derivative of e to the 1 minus x would be the e to the 1 minus x multiplied by the derivative of the exponent. Now the derivative of negative x is negative 1. So that's where that negative comes from there. And then minus, and then derivative of x e to the 1 minus x. Now, uh, two things you could do here. You could notice that x e to the 1 minus x is actually exactly the same as the original function. So the derivative of that should be this entire first derivative. Or you could just do product rule again. And the uh, derivative of, uh, of course, uh, x is uh, 1 times the second function e to the 1 minus x plus uh, the first function now, x, times the derivative of the second function, which of course would be uh, e to the 1 minus x times the derivative of the exponent is negative 1. So that is what's in here in yellow. And then of course this changes this to a subtraction. And then we have x e to the 1 minus x on the end. So that's where that part of the second derivative comes from. Now, removing the brackets so we can simplify our second derivative, uh, this will be minus e to the 1 minus x and then plus x e to the 1 minus x. So I'm going to write this term first because it's the positive 1. Notice that these are like terms, so if we combine those together, we get a uh, minus 2e to the 1 minus x. 
Now, no, now I'm, I'm not going to bother factoring this because we weren't asked to find inflection points, so we're not going to set the second derivative to zero. We're just using the second derivative test. And remember, the sign of the second derivative tells you about concavity and whether this is going to be a local minimum or local maximum at the point one one. So I'm going to put one in place of x here, and it does work out to negative one. But just to show you how that works, f double prime of one would be so we're putting a one here and we're putting a one here and a one here. So it would be one e to the one minus one minus two e to the one minus one. And of course, um, that's uh, e to the power of zero, so that's one. So we actually just get one minus, and the same thing here, that's equal to one as well, because e to the zero is one. So it's just one minus two, which of course is negative one. So that's where that negative one comes from. And that is less than zero. Now the second derivative is less than zero. That means that you have a local maximum. Uh, a negative second derivative means that the graph has this general shape because the uh, the second derivative being negative means that the first derivative has gone from like positive to negative. It's getting smaller. It's getting more towards like a negative. So we have a local maximum point there. So a local maximum occurs at the point one one.